Hi everyone and welcome to our next lesson in our Basic Beginners FreeCAD course for FreeCAD version 1. This video, like the previous one, has been updated since the FreeCAD pre-release had changed after the original video was released. In our last updated video, we looked at setting up preferences to get FreeCAD ready for the course, including changes that help make the interface more accessible. In this video, we'll focus on the user interface itself this means the toolbars, workbenches, and panels. We'll learn how to configure them so everything's easy to access as we move through the course. Let's begin by coming up to File and clicking on New. Now you may see a different layout here because of the workbench. We'll come to that in a moment. At the top, we have our top menu, and underneath, we have the standard toolbar. This standard toolbar is available from any of the workbenches. There is a drop down within that allows us to choose a workbench. At the moment, I'm on the surface workbench. I'm going to come over to the part workbench. You can see as we change workbenches, the standard toolbar stays. Workbenches are part of what can be thought of as a digital workshop. Each bench on the shop floor has its own set of tools for specific tasks. A part flows from one workbench to another and is continuously refined until completion. For the first part of this course, we'll be concentrating on the sketch workbench, which allows us to create 2D geometry. The part design workbench allows us to manipulate the 2D into 3D, and also the draft workbench, which supplies tools to manipulate both 2D and 3D, reducing repetitive tasks. Later in the course, we will utilize the fastness workbench and learn how to install additional workbenches in FreeCAD. As said, we're on the part workbench. So let's have a look at organizing the toolbars. Because we increased the icon size in our previous lesson, then some toolbars may now appear on multiple rows. If we look at this toolbar here, this is part of the standard toolbar. It's available from all workbenches. To the left, if we hover over these dotted lines, we get a move icon. If we click the left mouse button and hold, we can drag the toolbar and we want to drag it onto the top toolbar here. The same with the help toolbar. First have to drag it down out of the toolbar and then place it on top. We can split toolbars in the same way. Just click and hold and drag them down and it creates a new row. I'm just going to place this one back. If we switch to another workbench, such as a surface workbench, the changes that you apply to the standard toolbar should still stay. But if you see, say this toolbar on here, just drag it back up and it will remember the position next time. Some toolbars may have drop down markers. If we compress by clicking and dragging the dots, you'll see the double chevrons. We can click in here and see the additional icons within. I'm just going to drag this one back and can see how it takes up space. Hidden tools are shown by the drop down icon. So this one here, the draw style, we can pick additional tools within. If we pick one, the tool will show in the toolbar. Toolbars can be toggled on and off. So we just click anywhere in a toolbar and then right click. And we have the toolbars that are available in here. So the help toolbar, if we uncheck that, it disappears. To get it back, just come in and check the help toolbar. If we right click and lock the toolbars, the vertical dotted lines have disappeared and we can't drag these. So this stops accidents in the future. I'm just going to right click and uncheck the lock toolbars. Let's now move on to the panels. Let's focus on the task model panel. At the moment, the task is dot to the left-hand side along with the model. They're not combined. I can take the task and click on its header and move this outside. Blue rectangle will appear. I can drop it onto my 3D view. I can click and drag this off onto another monitor if I wanted to, or I can dock it elsewhere. Let's dock it to the right-hand side. Now the panel is on the right-hand side. If I want it back, I can follow a similar process, drag it 
and then place it back to where it was before. Note the rectangle. This shows where the panel is going to be placed. It won't be combined. If we wanted the panel to be combined, drag this out and drag this back in. Then we have to highlight the whole lot. At the moment, this is the model panel. The splitter is part of the model panel. So we highlight, this will place it above the model panel. As we move down, we see the blue rectangle and now I release, it's now combined with the model panel. If you can't click on the tabs, as we see here, hover over the task panel, pull it back out and then place it back on top and then try the reverse. Take the model panel, hover over the task panel. You can see the whole panel has been highlighted and drop that in. Now we've got the task and model panel combined together. We can change the order by clicking and dragging the tabs so they swap. This is the order that we'll be using for the rest of the course, the model and task panel combined. You will note this splitter here. This can be clicked and dragged to show more of one part of the panel than the other. Remember, this is one panel. Splitting the model and task panel can help speed up your workflow. We can have the model panel on the left and the task panel on the right. Depends how much free real estate you have when using FreeCAD. If panels ever disappear, just come up to view, panels, and select the panels from the list. In the next video, we'll explore navigation, how to move around your 3D view using your mouse, keyboard, or the trackpad on your laptop. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.